Hey guys, welcome back for another shoutcast. Get the game started on fast speed right away. You can see that this is a new map. There has not been a shoutcast of this one just yet. This is Defending the Homeland. It is made by Toe. And forgive me if I don't get the location numbers correctly, because I am not used to this map. I've only played a couple of games here so far. Okay. Get the teams introduced right away. You see it's left versus right. So in team one we have Cochise. He is playing on location one. I believe it's location one. Then here we have myself playing on location four. Again, I believe it's location four. And Mulberry playing on location five. Again, I'm not sure about these numbers. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't even say the numbers because I'm not even sure. Okay, other team we have Mexican T playing location six. True or Toe, the maker of this map. He and the map's name is Defending the Homeland. I don't believe I've even said that yet. Uh, this is Toe playing on location three. I think. I don't know. That location, whatever it is. And this is location two. I'm pretty sure this is two. And this is Desta. Alright, let's go. I'm gonna go over see what I'm doing. Since obviously I know what I'm doing. Um, uh, here I'm making a second school really early. And that is a complete accident. R.I.P. two timbers, as Mad Gamer said um, when he was spectating this game. Uh, I accidentally uh, <laughs> was making that LOL. Everyone laugh at me. Um, in, um, maybe some players would have elected to build a road down here, take some wood, and grab a gold mine right here, but I figured it wasn't worth it. Yeah, I saved a little bit of time not making this road down right here, but I was going to take these trees anyway, not to mention, um, the gold would have been closer to gold smelters. It's not always about saving space making roads, but it is also about surf time. No point in making a road, uh, with the gold mine over here to carry the gold all the way around. Definitely better to go on this side. Let's see. Um, got my first farm right away. I'm gonna go for a quick farms, a quick two farms, and then a third even pretty soon. Also, I do have a. Well, I guess it's not too early for a second summer where I'm eight times speed. Holy crap! Um, it's already 20 minutes into the game. Anyway, uh, I'm going to go ahead and probably, I believe I make this third farm pretty soon because I'm going to go for uh, three swine farms and a stable, which has become a kind of standard strategy these days. So, yep, there it is, the third farm. Go ahead and uh, get a whole lot of corn early on so I can keep stable uh, pig and horse production going at the same time. And cutting only with this woodcutter, because I, I really need this room for wood space. Down here is where my primary wood production is going to be. This guy's going to supplement it for a while, but eventually I'm going to turn to cut only and put some weapon production down here, as it is a very nice spot for it. And maybe even a little bit of food production, as it is close to my inn. But after making, uh, you know, I can fit several woodcutters right here. Maybe this is too many. Um, they're not going to be working non-stop, but it is nice to get these planted really fast. And then I'll put some more woodcutters up here, and maybe one here, and that'll be plenty enough wood. Um, for my, for my gaming. Mulberry making two iron mines right away. Uh, maybe he's not planning on making a third one till way later. Um, not absolutely sure about that. Uh, maybe he's just a little worried because his iron is quite late this game actually probably want iron weapons being made before 30 minutes So yeah, he's definitely uh, definitely falling behind here um, Many many farms will hold he's already got five farms is that normal he's making six already um, Let's go over to see what Mexican is doing. I know he makes many farms early on usually. Yeah, he Mexican actually is only on two so, 
Yeah, Molly is just falling behind. Maybe the, this location is kind of tricky. I had a nice fail game here uh, earlier today, actually, so that was fun. But anyway, back over, we'll check out Mexican real quick, see if we can figure out what he's doing. Has uh, some nice idle quarries, and probably just got... No, no, my bad. Probably don't need five quarries. Uh, don't block stone early on, and then you'll accumulate lots of stones in your storehouse, and you won't need your fifth quarry till way later. And maybe not even at all, depending on how your base goes. <clears throat> And, um, not a whole lot too much for me to comment since I don't actually know what his uh, strategy is and what he's thinking. He does have four sawmills. No, three sawmills. My bad. I thought I saw counted four. Yep, only three. That's good. Alright, go up to Toe. Toe has... Uh, I, I need to start calling this Toe Farms because I see him making farms like this all the time. Bunch of farms and circling a big old field. Um, don't know about the efficiency of that, but hey, Toe likes it. So um, I, I'm not saying it's, I'm not saying I think it's bad. I just I honestly really just don't know how that works. I don't do it myself very often at all. Okay, let's see what else. Um, Everybody always, of course, going for swords and uh, bowmen, so not a whole lot I can tell you that you don't already understand. We don't see a stable from Toe, so he will not be making horses. That is a bit irregular. Um, and yeah, Mixed does make a stable. Desta, also, I know he has a stable this game, but it is coming quite late. Um, probably want to get a stable by now already, but perhaps he was having a hard time getting his iron up because it is quite far in this location. A fourth sawmill coming in already, and no weapon production going. I don't know why. Uh, Desta is a very, very strong player, so he knows what he's doing. But still, um, four sawmills at this point in the game with no weapon production going. I, I, or wooden weapon production going. I don't know why he is doing it. Um, we can already see a lot of backed up timber, and he has uh, some of the storehouse as well. I, I don't know what's going on here. Still not making any weapons workshops. Probably should have made one before this sawmill, or maybe at the same time. Um, you can see me down here. I am already making wooden weapons with. Uh, well, I did get my fourth sawmill up shortly afterwards, and I think this is a good idea. Uh, making your wooden web shop, wo wo weapons workshop before your fourth uh, sawmill, or shortly accompanying it. Because oh, there it is. Okay, we see Tesla making. Um, some wine, which is not normal. I uh, did not see that one coming. You don't see wine very often, but it is nice. It's very compact. You can fit it in these tiny little spots here. It's very popular to put your vineyards near your stonemasons, because I guess by the time you're, uh, you can afford them, your stonemasons have cleared up a tiny bit of room around your stone. Not enough to make a farm, but enough for vineyards. And that's what vineyards are really um, useful for. They do take more room than bread for food production, just because you need so many vineyards to do it. Um, to get it going, but you can fit vineyards in these really compact spots. Okay, Cochise, um, I know he played very well here. You can see his Cochise farms, which actually, uh, making your farms like this is a little less efficient, but Cochise really likes it, uh, maybe just because it's become a staple theme, uh, theme of his. So heck, he enjoys it. Why not, right? Let's play for fun. Typical um, Czech style of making swords, which is uh, extremely uh, popular. And instead, I see um, you know making two armor smithies, let them run for a long time, then make two weapon smithies really late, and let them catch up. Now I see instead of uh, making swords until a certain point and then blocking it off, he's only ordered his swordsmith to make uh, ten swords or so, which is actually a neat idea because now he knows for sure he won't forget to turn this off. So that's a Simple trick that uh, everyone uh, probably already knows, but it's still useful, useful idea right there. Um, a fisherman here. I don't know what he is doing. Oh, there is fish here. Let me slow the speed down so I can see moving. Okay, there are fish here. 
Okay. All right, and we'll speed it up till peace time because I've already gone through everyone's bases. I can't talk a whole lot about stratagems yet because I don't know what the heck's going through in these guys' minds. See how everyone's doing. No, oh, funny thing. I said I need room for a bakery, so I'm going to delete my storehouse. Yeah, it's risky. Uh, later on, I think I almost have uh, pigs being backed up in my swine farms because I don't have place for a second. I don't have a second butcher, and no place for those extra pigs to go. But um, <laughs> I was really hurting for room, and it was so tempting to tear down that storehouse. I had nothing in it, so what the heck? Why not get that extra room? Okay, we'll just um, pause, look at everyone's peacetime time army is very fast because I always find that very interesting because a peacetime army is a pretty good indicator of how a player is going to perform and has performed in this game. Uh, standard army, um, I made some lance to go with uh, to counter any horses as horses are very common. A little bit of militia, knights, swords, typical army, very balanced and such. Mully, uh... Same as me, almost an identical army, except to less bows and less swords. Um, making uh, some axes instead of bows. To probably supplement a little less uh, swords that he does have here. And then Kochis, I know, made monster army this game. Almost 40 swords and 40... Not 40 bowmen, okay. But could have had 40 bowmen. In fact, it's better. Uh, better to have axe fighters than bowmen. Because they are more expensive. I just just monster army. Looking at this is crazy. It's got eight knights, uh, thirty one swords ish, thirty swordmen. Essentially, you know, your mind wants to round. You want to say ten knights, uh, thirty sword fighters, ten axe fighters, and thirty bowmen. Uh, that's almost perfect. Uh, I've seen this guy perform perfect, almost perfectly, time and again. Uh, Desta looks like um, average to well, not average, probably slightly below his average game. Uh, as he only has 30 leather, which is not normal from him. Um, only 6 knights. So Desta, not his finest game. I'm sure it's his first time on this location, though. Although it's pretty much everyone's first time on this map, I think. Except for Toe, who's probably played every location 100 times. Uh, Toe, um... I want to say average army, but it's actually quite a bit below average. Because he only has 27 jackets and uh, 30 swords. So almost 30-30, which is minimum uh, for the kind of level that's on TeamSpeak. Anything lower than 30-30, and you're, uh, it's all practically a failed game. And Mexican, almost 30-30, but it does have a little bit of horses. So nothing to worry too much about. We'll put it at 4 times speed. Now we'll keep it at 8. So people get their armies out. Now in this map, it's very important to control the center as soon as you can, because... Um, if you get trapped, if, for example, the right side puts an army up right here, we're not going to be able to get across this bridge to help Kochis. It's just a lot easier to maneuver if you have the center of the map. So indeed, very important to get the center and establish a position, which is what we're doing. Uh, the left side, I think, does have a slight advantage because of the location four here. It does put his barracks normally on this side of the iron, which is, you know, you get your soldiers over here very fast. Um, Muli, on the other hand, did put his barracks in the very back of his base, so it will take him a little longer to get into position. But as Muli does have this nice wide open area, it's not going to be too hard for him to uh, grab this area. I'm going to put on the fog for a little while to uh, try to walk us through, walk you through the logic here. And the siege of Mexicans base begins, and a dead scout over here it looks like. You can see all three of us are down here, and it seems Desta is down here with Toe as well. So not a whole lot of fighting going on at the top, which is good for us because Toji's has really no defenses up here. Um, Desta could really easily send uh, some soldiers over here to harass if... Uh, if he got a slight economical advantage on coaches.
and everybody enjoys playing a siege, right? When you're pushing, but nobody enjoys watching the other team uh, camp slash defend, whatever you want to call it. Um, because nothing happens, and I'm keeping the speed on four because I don't want to miss something. And here we are. We are going to see a catch here. Um, too many soldiers down here. I really should have had these guys up here. But it's not easy to pay attention to so many things at once. Especially for a poor old man, right? Okay. We have more here. And... My lances did make it to Destas' horses. Kind of. Not really. <laughs> So yeah, we win really well here, and we uh, have some mounted units left after the fight, so we can help use those to pick off bows. At the bottom, Mexican did defeat Mully, but barely. Um, he doesn't actually have enough to get through with this, which is actually quite a few nights from Mully um, uh, post-fight. And here we are, have an um, uber victory from us. Uh, a lot of range left. It would be nice to turn half of those ranged in the axe fighters, but of course it's not possible. And that's when you really, especially after the first fight, if you uh, manage to let your range survive, which your range should survive if possible, uh, switch over to making melee. It's a mistake a lot of players make is continuing to make bowmen. And you really don't need 50 bowmen. 50 is definitely the max. Uh, especially in 3 versus 3 games, you don't really want to accumulate tons of bowmen because better to control position with uh, mass melee. And your melee are going to die no matter what. You can save the ranged. And Mully is uh, doing what he can to uh, push on Mexican's base, but it's very hard with um, uh, this amount of towers and this uh, impossible to enter spot. I'm going to talk to Toe and uh, hopefully maybe some other guys can put in some suggestions, but to move this iron um, Toe likes to have lots of iron spots in his maps these days, but uh, this iron spot and this water spot is uh, makes it very hard to attack this position. And from what people say, this map is only played really in left versus right, so that makes this position almost impossible to attack. So. Okay. Now here is a very interesting almost paradox about the map. It's almost impossible to attack down here. And yet, um, also very difficult to attack from right here, because if you push here, then you'll get flanked from this player. If you push down here, or up here, you'll get flanked by this guy. So this is a very tricky spot for us to be in. We're trying to push, but it's very difficult. Perhaps in the end it would have been better to attack Desta, but you can see his position is uh, kind of impossible to attack as well with this uh, strangely positioned mountain, and he's got many towers as well. Um, Toe is, again, still not easy to attack. I'm trying to compare left versus right, because now I'm starting to think, you know, maybe it's not so fair. I mean, this position, impossible. You can't attack this. Uh, it's even harder than right, right here, perhaps. So this is, even though it's not, doesn't look like a pocket position, it really is. In retrospect, we should have uh, kept our knights down here maybe a little longer to attack or harass the economy, or left a couple of knights. But we really wanted to catch this. And uh, too bad we didn't push. We could have cut, used these units to push right in through here. But we saw these two lances. See the fog. I mean, it scared us away. 
and I was also quite fearful of Mexican sources, which would become quite potent if we lost all of ours. I'm actually very fascinated seeing this. Mully is doing a very good job emptying stones out of towers. That it's, I've never seen a... I'm wondering how uh, efficient this is, actually. And how easily this is possible. I'm going to do a little test of that after we're done. I'm done making the shoutcast of using a single knight to empty stones and um, how foolproof it is. Well, Mexican has quite a few soldiers here, actually. It's going to be very hard to uh, attack, but yet we send our soldiers in anyway. And my knights are just able to slip through here. And there is also a fight going on at the top. Uh, Kochi's losing a lot of soldiers. It would have been better if he would have slipped around this way, and we can actually see this, I think. But he uh, still insists on going through here. If only he was there a moment sooner. But I guess we're still winning the bottom. Desta saves the day with his horse. We barely lose on bottom and barely win at top. And here we are in a very bad flank position. And back to square one, holding a position in the center of the map while well, the enemy survives his siege. And this has really nice late game horses, and the amount of lances on the field are much less. I do sense some reinforcements, and I can make some more. I think I do. Um, but yeah, he's doing a really good job. I want to see. He does have just one stable. Does he have a market? Is he trading for horses? It doesn't look like it. So yeah, he's just doing a good job keeping his horses alive and accumulating masses of them. It looks like uh, Desta could actually win down here, but I think it's a good idea if he doesn't attack because he wouldn't really gain anything and he would just lose all of his knights, or most of his knights. So really, um, actually a good choice not to push by him. And I see, I'm not noticing a lot of tow soldiers, but I know he trained many this game. So I'm trying to see exactly what he's making. And it looks like mostly militia and so mostly melee i don't really see any range from him which is good which is good you want to make sure you're making a lot of uh, melee and too many leather jackets he's got three pig farms only maybe. really not impressed with this economy only three pig farms no stables seven farms a mill he could really afford another pig farm probably Make one more farm and okay, farm both. Well. 
when the game is starting to last an hour, 30 minutes, it is important to look at your economy and say, hey, um, looks like this is going to be a long one. I got to ask my teammates to help me keep an eye on my soldiers for a minute. Well, I rebuild my economy. <laughs> That's what I'm doing on here. I put uh, two woodcutters in the middle of my base, which is, I didn't need two there. I could have just made one. Um, <laughs> and rebuild my coal mines. It's always important to do. Um, you can see all players are doing actually a very fine job of rebuilding coal mines. And Desta <clears throat> looked like he knew it was going to be a long game, as he makes his coal mines very well placed out. In fact, wow, that's like perfect for that game. Like these guys are going to be running forever. Interesting to see that. And we had a change in plans. We thought, hey, we're going to go try to attack Desta. And looking back, I really wish we did. Um, but we saw once we saw this tower here. Uh, we said, hey, too many, so... But in retrospect, wow, we should have attacked there and the game could have ended a lot sooner. Um, or even moved in on Till. Wow, that's too bad. But this is the advantage you get from being aggressive. If these guys would have just cramped and camped in their bases, they would not have only been separated from each other, but also would have, uh... They also would have appeared to be weak, and if you're staying aggressive and your enemy hasn't explored you, then it can be a very advantageous way to, uh, keep your enemy from attacking you. And offense is the best defense in many situations. Uh, Toe believes that the best uh, defense is nice double layer of towers, and these towers are uh, very, very in the placed. In fact, this location looks very, very nice to defend because you have all this lovely room to position soldiers and build towers. Down here, you have a nice position for your soldiers and towers, and these tiny little choke points from which you put your towers behind. See, your enemy has a very, very nice defense. Whereas Kochis uh, looks like he's got a dangerously small amount of defense. Really should put some more towers. I mean, plump, 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 plump tower, maybe tower here, just... Heck, make a tower right here. <laughs> Why not, right? This economy is a little off. Only 56 surfs, holy crap, what's going on here? Kochis is dying, but I've never seen Kochis. Not never, but I see Kochis die a lot in late games. He's uh, more of a rush player. Don't know what that's to do with this horse here, but he's gonna die. And that's the our Mexicans doing what I think is the right thing, just expanding his leather production. Um, going up to a fourth, maybe maybe even a fifth. Fifth is probably not necessary, especially if you have a stable. But four uh, pig farms, and you can have very nice late game leather. Um, also, leather available for trading too, if needed. Just trying to figure this out. We see, um, I have one, two, three, four iron mines, and this one looks like it almost could be Mully's. Now, Mully's opposite location, I think, would be this one, which has five iron mines. Mully's has one, two, three, four, possibly five iron mines if I don't take that one. 
Now, Tove's location is kind of the opposite of mine, which has four iron mines possible. Oh my. But he has four iron mines, even if Desta goes for five. So it seems like the right side has one more iron mine, which is not a really big deal because four or five, I mean, you don't need five iron mines. So. Okay, looks like we have a big fight here. And throw a storm, which is not really logical here. Wasn't like he needed to catch us at any moment. Or in any urgency. You're just outrunning your uh, range, really. Okay, and my horses get dissolved really fast by Toe's uh, masked melee here, which is really well done by him. And for the first time, it looks like the right side is winning. Speed things up a little bit as they're going to get into the position before they try to siege. Oh, no speed. I want to keep that speed going. I'm ready for bed. See what Dast is doing. Look at this militia. You could uh, do a good job uh, coming in here to uh, wipe out Kochis uh, before he gets those extra layer of tower. Uh, toe making toe towers. That's what I gotta call him. I see him doing this a lot. Long road of to a lone tower in the middle of nowhere. Forgive my quietness, as there's nothing I haven't said already, and I don't know what the heck to say. Oh shoot, I completely forgot that this happened. Um, you can see Desta finally did send a rush on me over here, and... Cochise is in dire trouble because these uh, mechs are not his. They're the Mexicans and they are killing him. And my knights here are of really no use because reinforcements, Pike and Knight are on the way and will clean us up. And he will clean up Cochise's base, which, to be honest, uh, wasn't really worth saving that much, no offense to Kochis, but he's really got no late game going on here anyway. Um, it seemed like his economy was pretty much dead already. <laughs> Look, he deleted his uh, storehouse also and put a butcher there, just like I put a baker in there. And Toe sending everything up to the top, so we fight on the bottom. And, uh, too many range, really. And here we are pushing here, and Toe is sending soldiers down to my base now, and I don't like that at all. Uh, this is a uh, um, part of my French, but a shitstorm as they call it, because it's just a ton of militia. And we see here the catch of the game. Um, as <laughs> it's not really where you want your militia attacking, but hey. Uh, fighting one on one against two sword, one militia on two sword fighters with uh, Bowman helping the sword fighters. You're gonna get cleaned up really nicely. Okay, back down to right here. Desta sends his knights back down from Cochise and does a nice flanking. Um, 
came so close actually to killing the Mexican. But these pike right here, this lance, is gonna really make the difference. And as as well, the uh, reinforcements from Toa. And Moe says, hey, I'm getting out of here. Um, but uh, we have soldiers in my base now. And as you can see, with me being attacked and Kochi's out of the game where Mexican keeps surviving, game is pretty much over. We'll speed it up till the end. It was a fun game. Really enjoyed it. It was the one that got away because we really should have won that game or this game. But hey, uh, the other team had a very nice comeback. Mexican T defended gallantly. And. Uh, Coaches had he um, had a little bit better defenses, a little bit better like game. Um, may have been able to uh, sustain that rush from Desta a little bit better. Um, but all in all, um, it was a good game. Everyone played very well. And uh, my uh, thoughts on the map. I hope I'm wondering if you guys have any thoughts as well. But I think this is a um, very nice map. Um, and the only thing is maybe this location is a little too hard to attack, but I feel like the gameplay here is very, very similar to Golden Cliffs, actually. Small entrances to the bases, but it's important to catch the center to um, control the map well. So, maybe I'm wrong, but those are my thoughts. We'll look at stats real quick. And you're welcome to pause the video and look at these. Um, I feel like I had the uh, almost by far the best economy. But uh, I feel like Mexican actually may have had the best had he not been killed so many times. Uh, you can see here he uh, didn't even get defeated and he almost has lost as many citizens as Cochise did. So, you know, he was really being pounded the whole game. Um, uh, Toe, most units, most of the militia, I believe, will check out his hand axe. Um, yeah, many, many militia. Um, uh, Mexican doing a very nice job defending. <laughs> Look at this fighting stat, so this is what you call towers, but no, uh, that's alright. And this right here is what you call militia. Anyway, um, everyone's favorite stat is horses, right? Uh, unless you're toe, then your favorite is iron. Anyway, thanks for watching. Have a good one.